So the, the next speech is from Easy Smart Grid. Uh, welcome, Mr. Peter. Uh, sorry, Mr. Thomas Walter, Managing Director, and the title of the presentation is Easy Smart Grid Opportunities in Energy System Transformation. Uh, that's Next slide. okay so welcome and good afternoon my name is Thomas Walter I'm the founder of easy smart grid uh, I want to bring to you a very different uh, area which is energy um, and uh, ultimately why I'm here is because I think the 90% of the added value of smart grid can be put on chips in end users devices so I'm talking about decentral control, about saving money, and about smart grid on islands and isolated grids. Energy system, we have a paradigm change ahead. The future is going to be very different from the past. So what we're looking for is not linear innovation, but disruptive innovation, not as you see here with windows from 8.1 to 10, uh, but a real disruptive innovation. Our business starts in a niche of that uh, change and could scale up to covering the full market based on very strong uh, assets, customer benefit, technology and uh, protection. And I hope it's an opportunity within the range that you're look looking for. This is our market. This is a green island. Well, these islands are not very green. They are mostly power uh, powered by very dirty uh, diesel or heavy fuel oil. We have a one, two, three conversion approach. I'm not going into that uh, at this presentation. What's the characteristic of this market? They have extremely high cost of generation. Renewables are already much cheaper there, so you don't need any subsidies. Uh, you could half or even uh, further reduce your generation cost if you could put in more renewables. So. We overcome and we address the, the limiting factor to this, which is uh, adapting the demand to the available generation. The market is big enough for a startup. We're talking about 100 billion euros of diesel being burned. So we're very happy with a very small share of the market. We take it where we can have access to the customers and do successful business. So what's the value proposition? We convert customer flexibility into value, euros, dollars, whatever you have. You can see from this, let me see whether uh, that the sun is shining at times when energy is not consumed. Most energy is consumed in the evening. So if you're able to consume energy when the sun is shining, then you use energy which would otherwise be uh, shed it, as it's called, and as you do not, do not have to charge your car at night or to actually desalinate your water or cool your, uh, your, uh, your goods, uh, you store thermal energy, you need less uh, expensive fuel. So that is the very general um, uh, added value. Now, many people are doing that. We focus on business, not on as much IT as possible short-term savings. So we assume that future smart grids will need decentral management. This can only be achieved by variable prices. Uh, it has to be very low cost in order to enable consumer devices. We talk about electric cars. We call about, talk about freezing, freeze, uh, household equipment, washing machines, dishwasher, and so on. The technology must be cheap enough to actually influence those. So we focus on the early markets, which is the isolated microgrids, where we can transmit price information in baseband uh, uh, grid frequency, so that everywhere in the grid you can very cheaply imp implement automatic demand response. You have a very secure, a resilient technology. You cannot hack it. It's real time. And I'm talking about seconds and not minutes. And it's self-stabilizing. In the medium and long term, there is an upside potential. Um, we are very likely to see cellular energy grids, pretty much the same as we have it in telecoms. And this could be an operating system, an element of an operating system of such smart grid cells, where we enable real-time 
markets where we um, have a lot of potential to integrate the intelligence, as I've said, into customer device controllers. So within your washing machine, within your car, you have the necessary intelligence and not in a central utility. And it's a lot of also potential for power electronics because you will couple those uh, cellular grids with power electronics, frequency inverters, and so on. If you have questions on that, I think I can't put it in this presentation. The benefits over the state of the art are many. Um, and for each particular market segment, it's enough if you have one or two uh, USPs. So for some of them, data security will be an issue, for example, in Europe. Uh, if you're looking for emerging countries, you're more interested in simplicity. So you don't need 10 highly qualified staff on a small island in order to run the system. Uh, Cybersecurity is an issue. Uh, but in all cases, you will see um, that cost investment and running cost uh, is very important. Going a bit deeper into the business, so we are not talking about Germany, we are not talking about mainland United States, we are talking about relatively small energy systems, um, like Mediterranean islands, like uh, Canary Islands, like Hawaii, that would be at the upper end, but they're very small systems, could just be a holiday resort or a mine or an agricultural uh, enterprise somewhere in uh, Brazil or Tanzania or whatever. What's very important is that initially there will be private grids, so they are not interested in politics and standards, they're interested in efficient technology which earns money, and we can go up. The value is very high, every liter of diesel you can replace uh, provides a benefit of around 20 euro or dollar cents. And uh, obviously, as I told you, we are very happy with small niches, and we pick those where we have customer access, where customers are ready to buy and have the ability to pay. Now, I'm here because we would like to have some money. I've already done most of this on my own money. I've invested some 100,000 euros into this. Uh, since we established Easy Smart Grid about one and a half year ago, we've been selected top three of the EIT ICT Smart Energy Challenge last year. There are already external experts, among others, Max Planck Institute, working on this without a contract with us because they find it very stimulating. We have patents uh, examined by the European Patent Office and filed in Europe and the United States. And we have a network ready to rumble once we can deliver. Now, that's what we need money for. Over four, peer, four years, we estimate to need 3 million euros uh, to expand the team around the founder, which basically is myself, um, with all these credentials. We think it could be also very interesting for strategic partners from the semiconductor industries because uh, some of them might be interested in the IP they can put in firmware. Uh, they might be interested to sell more solar energy into markets that today are already filled up. For power electronics manufacturers, because there will be a lot of power electronics opportunities, and obviously in communication control. So I have a roadmap here. I don't see any sign at the moment, so I can go into this, I can go into this roadmap. We have two phases next year and the following, where we really invest in two things. The first is the product, so prototype which we can try out in a real island, in a real grid, and on the other side work on partners who are willing to have us uh, experiment on them to demonstrate the benefit and then we go for out for industrialization and rollout. Thank you for that and I promise you it will not be an investment in a better mousetrap. Thank you.